everybody, and welcome back here to Building Brick Studios. And welcome to a brand new series of LEGO CGI tutorials. It has been over a year since I last posted a LEGO tutorial, and I have gained a lot of new knowledge, and software has been updated, and all types of things. So I thought, now that I'm back into LEGO, which I'm so thankful for, I would start off from the beginning again, showing you guys with uh, updated software and things, how to start off um, for all of you newcomers to LEGO CGI, because it is a really fun thing to do. And I'm going to show you guys how to get started. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is you may need to download a program. Either we're going to, I'm going to be showing you two different programs today on where to build your Lego models. So what you will be animating or putting into the still picture or whatever you're going to be using in your video or picture. So I use two different things. I use Lego Digital Designer, which is a program actually made by Lego. And then there is kind of a third party, LeoCAD. It's not actually LeoCAD 2, I just have two versions of it, so I just named this one too. This is the most up-to-date one. So I will start off in LEGO Digital Designer. Um, this is the definitely the most user-friendly, friendly, but there are some advantages to just going straight to LeoCAD. So anyways, I'm just going to start off in Digital Designer Extended. I like to use Extended just because it has more options and whatnot. You're going to come over here into free build, and this is where you're going to build your model. Now, you, this is a lot more user friendly, as I said, than LeoCAD. LeoCAD over here, you have to search through to find all of the parts that you will be using. Um, so it definitely takes longer. Um, you select your colors. So I'll show you some advantages to this. But, anyways, you can see how LEGO Digital Designer is a little bit more user friendly. Um, just to show you a little bit of navigation around here, here are all of your parts. You can actually see them. They're not listed by name, so that's a lot easier. Um, you can put together templates and groups of parts. Um, I'm not going to go through a super long tutorial on how to do this program because it's pretty self-explanatory and easy to learn. Um, you basically bring your parts in here and whatever you want, you know, you build whatever your model is that you're going to be using or your minifigure or whatever. You can change the colors. You can uh, change the decals in here as well and different things. You can clone pieces by using this, which is lots of fun. This is the delete tool, obviously. You can hide pieces so that you can kind of like see around them, but then you can show them again. That's, that's useful. The flex tool will be used for flexing like string pieces and whatnot. You'll be using the hinge tool for um, rotating different parts um, and also the hinge tool as well. And then this is your basic selection and you can click and drag things as well. Um, this is your 3D rotate. So you can rotate with these and you can zoom in and zoom out. This is a very nice program, well made by Lego. But anyways, uh, let's say you've made your model. Now, I'm just going to do, just for this tutorial, I'm just going to import um, just a regular, let's just import a regular 2x4 brick. Only we'll import uh, three of them on top of each other. And we'll just kind of change up the colors just so you can see what it will look like. All right, so we got three different colors. We just got uh, three 2x4 bricks on top of each other. Um, in a column. Alright, so now once you've finished your model saying that this is finished, you're going to come over here to File and then you're going to click Export Model. And there's one advantage to LeoCAD and that is you can export files in LeoCAD straight to the file that we will be using in our animation program. But for this, for this program, you need to go through two different programs to export to the correct file. So now you're going to come over here and you're going to come down to .ldr. This is very important. The other files will not work. So you have to use .ldr, and I'm just going to name this tutorial like that. I'm just going to save it to my desktop just so it's easy for you guys to see. And I'm going to export it. Now, if you do use LEGO Digital Designer, you will need like LeoCAD. It is a must. So I'm just going to close out this. I'm not going to save it as an actual picture. But now you can see that we have our LDR file over here. And if we come into LeoCAD, this is the program that we're going to be bringing that file into. So you can see how there's an advantage if you were to just start building in this program. Although then you have to kind of scroll through and it takes a little bit of getting used to and some different things. For this, um, you can see this is like your 3D rotate tool over here. This is your kind of shift tool. We got some magnifying glasses. 
which are good to use. This is the grab tool, the rotate tool for ro rotating bricks. You can see there's more advanced options. You can set the rotate angle to different things. Um, the slide tool, translations. Um, we also have the regular selection and whatnot. And you won't need these tools over here because I, I've never used them and it's for something completely different. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to open what we just built. Um, I'm not going to save changes to that, obviously. So if we come over here to our desktop, here's tutorial.ldr. And here are our bricks that we were just building with. Um, now that you have your model in here, you'll, you may need to make a few changes because the format, there may be some brick bricks that aren't in this program that are, are in LDD. So, you know, you, you kind of have to play with it. But anyways, all these bricks are in here. Making sure that your model is the way that you like it. Um, and it looks great to me. Now we're going to come over here and this is where we're going to export it to the file that we're going to be using for the actual 3D animation. Now we're going to come over to your export. 3D Studio. This is going to be the actual file that we bring into Blender, which is going to be the CGI program that I'm going to be using. It is a free program and it is powerful and great to use and can be learned. It has a slight learning curve, but it's not that hard. Alright, so we're going to save this um, tutorial. I'm just going to add an extra T on the end just so I don't get confused. And I'm just going to save this to the desktop as well for uh, tutorial purposes. Now, you may probably want to make folders for like your LDR files and your 3DS files just so you don't get anything mixed up. Alright, so I'm now going to boot up the one of the most recent forms of Blender. This is the most recent stable version that's out. Um, Blender is a great program. It's open source. Um, so when you first open it, you have this cube here. And what you're going to want to do is I'm just going to kind of open up this window a little bit better just so I can see everything. Um, this is a great program. We're going to come over here and we're going to click the X key and we're going to click delete. So we're going to get rid of our cube. Now we're going to come over to the file and we're going to click import 3D studio. We're going to go underneath our desktop, tutorial, this is the file, the import.3ds. And now you can see, uh, right now I am pushing down on the scroll wheel to rotate around my object. You can also use your number pad. You can use four and six. Number one is front view, three is side, seven is top. And if you click five, you go into orthographic mode, which removes perspective. So you learn how to maneuver around through time. So this is our model that we will be animating. You can see it puts them into three separate pieces. You come over here, see piece zero, one, two, I don't know why it starts out with zero, it's just the way it works. Um, if you click over here, and then you, if you click on a piece and you hold down shift, you can click all three. And I'm just going to press the S key, and I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Um, just so we can see it better. Uh, this little thing you might be wondering with this, this is our light source, this is our lamp. We're just going to kind of shove that out of the way right now. And now what you're going to want to do is, um, it's very important if you're using like a ship or something, um, I'll show you a quick example. If you are using like a ship um, that you're going to be animating, you're going to want to put all of the pieces together, which is uh, very important. So I'm going to come over here, I've got to find my 3D Studio file, let's go with General Grievous' ship. And you can see here is his ship right here, so I'm just going to kind of move this out of the way. And I'm going to come down over here. If you hold down shift and then your middle mouse wheel, you can like use the drag type of tool. And I'm going to zoom in over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a piece. And now I'm going to press Z. This brings you into wireframe mode. And then I'm going to press B to box select. Click and drag over the whole model. And then press Control G. And now it is all one piece. Keep in mind, you may want to do some editing before you join them all together. Um, now I'm going to go back to Z. And now we're back in normal mode. So you can see his ship over here, piece 153. You double click, you can rename it. Um, so I'll just name it ship. Very cool. 
And so over here, I'm just going to put together our pieces as well. So you must be clicked on a piece over here. You must click on one of these and then hold down shift and right click to select multiple ones if you don't want to do the box select method. So now that I have these selected, I'm going to press Control G, and now they're one piece as well. I'm just going to name this one Bricks. Boom. Now you're probably wondering, how do we start animating? Now I'm not going to start animating until the next tutorial, um, which will give you guys time to build your models and whatnot. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to do different textures and whatnot, and it's going to be really great because there's actually two different ways to render your image. There's Cycles Render and Blender Render. Um, but for this tutorial, we're just going to stay in Blender Render. Well, actually, I will show you the difference in this tutorial. So right now you're going to see, if we click Render, Render Image, this is going to show us what our camera sees, and our camera is this black thing right here. That's our camera. So um, you can move your camera around and where you want it. By the way, Control-Z is Undo. Control-Shift-Z is Redo. And then A is Deselect, or if you press A again, it selects everything. So now what we're going to go into do is if you press zero on your number pad, you can see what your camera is seeing. So now we can fit everything into our camera view. So I'm going to scale that down with the S key again, bring it down over here. Maybe I'll come over here. And if you, you look at these tools down here, uh, this is the rotate tool. So I can rotate his ship around like wherever I want it facing. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll press the S and scale it up a little bit more. Uh, that looks great. Uh, these are not really textured. These are just these just have the basic materials. Uh, you can see the materials right here. We'll get into that later though. Um, so now if we click render, render image, we can now see, well, slightly, but you can see that they fit inside our view. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring over our light source which you can have different types of lights. You could have a sun, which is more powerful, a spotlight, a hemisphere, area. You know, I'm just going to use the regular point. But I'm going to turn the energy up to a 2, just so we can see things better. Render, render image. And now you can see that we definitely have a much better view of our bricks. And if you want to change the background, you come over here to the World tab, and... Um, you can play around with the uh, different colors and whatnot. Um, it is, nope, oh, clicked off the preview. This is your preview tab. So now you can see everything is in white, which is very cool. We got some different shadows going on and whatnot. Um, it's really good. And so now, if you want to see the difference between Blender Render and Cycles Render, I will now show you that. Blender Render is going to be more for animation. Cycles Render takes a lot more power because it gives a better sense of light and shadows. You'll see the difference right here after I render this image. You can see how the light is a lot different and how um, it may look to you a little, you can see some, uh, what do you want to call it? There's some extra noise added in here, but we can fix that if we come into our render section. I got to find it. Um, we come over here to sampling, and if you change the render from 10 to any number higher, it will take a little bit longer to render, but it will look better. Um, Cycles render is going to be more for still images or short because it does take longer to uh, render, though you can see it looks much better. Like, look at that. It looks so much cooler. Um, but then you can see the difference again if we go into Blender render over here. Render render the image, you can see it just looks blah, you know, it's not really popping out to your eyes, so to speak. So Cycles Render is definitely going to be the way to go if you're shooting still images. Um, but if you're going to be making an actual animation, remember, it has to go frame by frame. So it will take longer the more samples you have. And if you have more noise, which this could actually be rendered at 50 samples, over here because I'm not seeing any noise really at all in its standard uh, picture. So that's very nice, um, but this is probably going to end off the first tutorial. Um, and by the way, if you do want to say, if you make like a little scene and you want to save the still image, you come over to image, save as image, and then you just pick the name, 
tut for tutorial and then go to your desktop save as image and if you want to change the uh, if you want to change the type of your output you can come over here still underneath the little camera over here in the render screen you can change this to like JPEG or whatever you're looking for so I hope this tutorial helped on how to get bricks into Blender. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description below because odds are I will know how to help you out. Uh, new tutorials will be coming in the future. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe for many new tutorials coming in the future. Bye.